Thanks for watching my presentation. I am Hao Huang Wen, a PhD student from the Ohio State University. Today, I'm going to talk about a study of a new wireless attack surface from automotive OBD2 dongles. This is a joint work with Professor Qi Alpha Chen from Asgard Research Group at UC Irvine and my advisor, Dr. Zhi Qianlin. In the past few years, we have witnessed a huge growth of the Internet of Things in many areas, in, even including the automotive industry. In particular, in the automotive IoT, a vehicle is often connected with the user's smartphone, and users can conveniently perform re remote vehicle control, diagnosis, and status monitoring. This is due to the universally deployed OBD2 standard in gasoline vehicles since 1996. Today, there are numerous such dongles, and they can be accessed by a companion mobile app in user's smartphone. We now use a diagram to illustrate the workflow of a wireless OBD2 dongle. On one hand, the dongle is plugged into the OBD2 port of the vehicle. Fundamentally, it is connected to the in-vehicle network, which is usually called the canvas. To perform vehicle monitoring functions, the dongle and the canvas exchange with canvas messages and vehicle data, such as the vehicle speed. On the other hand, the dongle is also connected to the user's smartphone through wireless networks such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. The smartphone app also interacts with the dongle to transfer corresponding messages and data. However, such a design essentially exposes the in-vehicle network to the external world. If the dongle is not properly designed with security practices, it may enable a series of new over-the-air vehicle attack vectors to compromise not only the user privacy and security, but also the safety of drivers, passengers, and pedestrians. Historically, there was a remote vehicle attack on an OBD2 dongle in 2017. It was reported that the dongle contained vulnerabilities in the authentication and message filtering process, and they allow an attacker to remotely stop the engine of a moving vehicle. The dongle was soon removed from the market. As of today, there are still numerous OBD2 dongles available, and they are popular among drivers, repair technicians, and also auto insurance companies. However, whether these dongles are vulnerable to remote attacks remains unknown to the public. To fill this research gap, we conduct a comprehensive vulnerability analysis on 77 wireless OBD2 dongles that are available on Amazon US in February 2019. We implemented an automatic testing tool called DongleScope. We discovered five different types of vulnerabilities and showed that each of the dongle has at least two vulnerabilities. We further construct four concrete attack case studies which can lead to privacy leakage, property theft, and even safety threats. Next, I will describe the concrete attack model. We consider the attacker's goal is to exploit the wireless attack surface exposed by the OBD2 dongle and achieves wireless attacks onto the vehicle's canvas. To summarize, there are three mandatory stages towards a successful attack. The first one is the broadcast stage. Before connection, the dongle must broadcast its information to all nearby devices to indicate its willingness. As an attacker, she is able to collect the broadcast information, and her goal is to identify a victim dongle in the air. The second stage is the connection stage. The attacker's goal is to establish a successful connection with the dongle. After the connection is established, the attacker enters the communication stage. Her goal is to send unauthorized canvas messages through the dongle, which will finally reach the canvas to perform the attacks. Based on the attack model, we have designed and implemented an automatic tool called DongleScope to measure a few objectives that can lead to vulnerabilities across the three attack stages. At a high level, it takes an OBD2 dongle and its companion mobile app as inputs and performs dynamic and static analysis correspondingly. 
The first step is broadcast information collection, corresponding to the broadcast stage. In this stage, the measurement objective is to collect as much broadcast information as we can. This information could help identify the victim dongle of our interest. The second step is the connection setup, corresponding to the connection stage. As a result, the attacker's goal is to establish a connection with the dongle. We define two measurement objectives in this stage. First, we are going to check if the connection can be successfully established without providing any credentials. Second, we also check if multiple access is allowed. This is to simulate a scenario that the attack happens when the driver is still inside the vehicle. The first step is the Kahemba's matches test, which is to test vulnerabilities in the communication stage. We also define two objectives. First, we inject a predefined message and see if it can be delivered to the canvas. Second, we measure if other canvas messages can be injected as well. To determine whether a message is predefined for the dongle, we introduce a predefined message generation step. Specifically, we applied a backward slicing algorithm to reverse engineer the companion mobile app to extract all the predefined messages for the dongle. Next, let me talk about the experiment setup and the results of vulnerability analysis. We collected all wireless OBD2 dongles on Amazon in the US in February 2019. Fortunately, there are not that many, which are 77 in total. We further categorized them into three types based on their connections. There are 44 Wi-Fi dongles, three Bluetooth classic dongles, and 30 BLE dongles. Our dynamic analysis was performed on a 2015 Honda Civic. In addition, according to the dongle specifications, we also downloaded their companion mobile apps from Google Play. As shown in the table, there are 21 in total. Next, let me talk about the experiment statistics. In the broadcast stage, we found the vulnerability status of half of the dongles can be fingerprinted with their broadcast information, such as the Wi-Fi SSID. This can increase the success rate of the attacks. In the connection stage, we found that nearly all dongles have no connection layer authentication by default. It implies that these 71 dongles can be directly connected without providing any credentials. In addition, we found that only one dongle has application layer authentication. It implies that the rest 76 dongles can be compromised once the connection is established. During the connection stage, we also discovered that 29 dongles allow multiple access even when another device is connected to them. This vulnerability significantly increases the flexibility of attacks, even when the driver is still inside a vehicle. Moreover, due to the nature of the connection network, only Wi-Fi dongles have such vulnerability. In the communication stage, we discovered that 67% of the dongles fail to provide a campus message filtering capability. This vulnerability allows the injection of dangerous messages such as those vehicle control related ones. We also discovered that free dongles are vulnerable to over the air firmware subverting and extraction. Among the four dongles that support over the air firmware updates, we find that free dongle firmware images can be obtained from their companion mobile apps. And two of them are vulnerable to firmware subverting attacks. To demonstrate the five vulnerabilities, we further construct four attack case studies and evaluate them on our testing vehicle. In this table, we summarize these attacks, their preconditions, as well as the portion of the vulnerable dongles. As shown, most of the dongles are vulnerable to at least one of the attacks. Next, I will illustrate the first two attacks. For more details of other attacks, please refer to our paper. Dongles with lack of authentication are vulnerable to vehicle data leakage attacks, since they at least allow the injection of diagnostic campus messages by design. We further break down this attack into three sub-attacks, including location leakage, diagnostics data leakage, and campus traffic leakage. 
The second attack is property theft attack. We find that there is a canvas message that can be injected to disable the wireless door locking. In this case, a careless driver may leave the vehicle without being aware that the locking is not successful, and the attacker will have the chance to steal the property on this vehicle. To mitigate these vulnerabilities, we propose three countermeasures. The first and the most fundamental solution is to add authentication directly on the canvas, which could prevent unauthorized messages. The second solution is to build a firewall on the OBD2 port. For instance, a physical gateway module has been developed for the Chrysler models to provide access control. Finally, the third solution is to add authentication on the OBD2 dongles. More recently, there are open source platforms for secure dongle development, such as OpenXC. To summarize, I have presented dongle scope. I demonstrate that it can be used to identify various vulnerabilities in OBD2 dongles. We have uncovered five types of vulnerabilities across three attack stages and present four attack case studies that have real world security implications. The source code of dongle scope has been made available at our GitHub page. Thanks again for watching my talk and I will answer your questions in the Q&A section.